Good afternoon, everybody. It's uh, Michael here from Michael's Card Art once again. And I've got a very impromptu, but I think special little project for us this, uh, <clears throat> for this afternoon. And it was something that I just happened to stumble across when I was doing some cleaning up, actually. <clears throat> now, we're going to be playing with flowering tulips. Now, I have uh, found this one in the back of my stash and I have to say, it's better than what I even expected it to be. If I can use that, or say that. And we're going to mix it up with a couple of other uh, stamp sets. Grassy Grove. And I'm also mixing it with the, the um, On The Horizon DSP. And for those of you who have seen some of my work on Instagram at Michael's Card Art, you will know that I have this little affair going on with this DSP. I use it for everything. I've created so many landscape scenes using this DSP. And you will find um, some work that I've done on uh, another video that I've got here on the YouTube channel. But let me show you uh, why I like this um, DSP so much. Because every time I look at it, I can see a landscape. Horizon, trees, clouds, water, land, horizon, sky, land, etc. And even here, I can see horizon, throw in some trees, a bit of land, a bit of a water puddle. It's fabulous. And there, I mean, you can see that somebody who had poor vision could see that there's a horizon and a sky and vice versa. It's such a fantastic DSP that Stampin' Up! came up with. Now it is retired but if you can get access to it grab it while you can. So I've taken the liberty of uh, doing some a lot of pre-printing and all of that with today's project because it's um, well for me, a fast game is a good game. And I have to say, if I can do some work in advance, uh, a lot of this stuff that you know how to do already. So I don't want to teach anyone how to suck eggs. However, um, let me show you some of the work that I've done in advance. This was the DSP in its original state, minus the trees, minus these little things here. I cut it in half, so it was three inches, and then I stamped it. And I stamped it with the grassy grove trees, as you can see here. Um, I tried to keep the stamping as low to the horizon as possible so that it is a neat fit. And what I also did, I took the liberty of um, adding some color and some lines here. Now, what we're going to be doing is creating a, um, a field of tulips and some hand cut tulips. Now, as I said to you, I like this flowering tulip set so much. Let me show you a couple of things that I have done with it. Um, so you get an idea. And this just speaks volumes as to what you can do with this set. So we're going to take um, these long stem tulips and we're going to put them into the field of uh, the DSP that we're creating here. Oh, you will notice also that I like to build texture and height with all of my work and so these flowers don't need to sit as high as that but i'll um i'll make them as high as i can for the effect that i'm after so just be warned now some people don't like that because of the impact it creates with postage and the fear of ruining the card by the time it gets to the recipient but I keep these cards for hand delivery and for those special friends where I'm prepared to pay a little bit of an investment um, on the postage. So let's get started without further ado. I'll tell you what assets we need. Um, we've got the flowering tulips. We've got the grassy grove. We've got the DSP. What I've done is I've stamped. Oh, and the other thing we need is this. So how it's going to basically look is, well, I'll show you what I've done. I've prepared all of this in advance, but let me show you. So it's basically going to sit like this <clears throat> in, whether it's beveled or whether it's curved like that. Um, I'm going to show you some handmade uh, tulips that I've cut myself, but 
And this is just to give you an insight. These, um, we're not using these tulips. Um, I'm using these for another project. However, it's going to look a little like this. And I'm just getting these, massing these flowers in advance, throwing them together like this. <clears throat> Voila. I love the look. And obviously they're not going to sit like that. That's a little bit better. And I've got a contrast of colours. So it'll be a field of tulips in a three-dimensional setting like that. Okay. And a few other things that I'm going to add to it. So <clears throat> let me show you how I did that. I'm going to use this piece of cardstock. I did um, use a cotton bud. And I stamped that with two colours. One was the cherry cobbler and also the, uh, let me have a look here. No, I tell, I tell a lie. It was Merry Merlot and Gorgeous Grape. And what I did there was took the Liberty <clears throat> alternating between purple and red and I've just stamped a few of these things down here. And then what I did, I'll just add some of these colors back to it now. I should slow down a little bit so that I don't. Uh, mess that up. Okay, so with the cotton bud, it was just a sporadic dots on the page, and then I've grabbed the Evening Evergreen uh, stamp and write, and I've just put a line down underneath each of those dots, and a bit of a squiggle to represent gl um, the grass growing under each one. <clears throat> now the purist would say I should get a stamp with that little dot and do such a thing, but it's card craft and I'm crafting. And so what you're basically doing is you're building a field of tulips, red and mauve if you like. There you go. Now you don't have to put one on each one, but you're creating the grass scene as such. Okay, that will suffice. Okay. <clears throat> then what I need to do is I need to colour the foreground um, asset. And how I'm doing that is this. I'm going to use, let me just get that Merry Merlot away and the Gorgeous Grape away. There we go. Now, what I want to do, I want some green and I want a little bit of um, brown. So I've used Soft Suede and I'm going to use a bit of Old Olive. <clears throat> and as I said, <clears throat> I'm going to use the Berry Burst for the tulips. And I might even go with some gorgeous grape. I want to keep that a little bit lighter than what I've done. So let's just do the gorgeous grape first. I'll put some paper down. There we go. That out of the road. Now, this will just be a colouring like so. You don't need to do all of them. And then I'll grab another blender with the red and I'm going to add some red in here. So, some sporadic colouring so it looks like there is a field of uh, tulips going on. Now, as you can see, I am quite random with the way I colour um, some of my artefacts, but I think that randomness adds <clears throat> to the, 
to the authenticity, if you like, or the natural look of what we're trying to achieve here. Now, I'm going to grab um, and let's get some green going in on the stems. There we go. Just across there like that. And as you go back over it again, you'll see that it will slightly darken, <clears throat> which is just fine. Okay. Now, let's get some soft suede happening in here. Now, purists would say you should always change a brush. I probably would have just said that too at the start of my career here with card craft. But you know what? I don't mind mixing my colours, so to speak, on the table. Because I like things to have a very natural sort of feel about it. Um, I do always clean my brushes after every use. And I do clean the... Um, the edges of my um, uh, ink pads as well after every use before I put them away. I can't stand having untidy workspaces. I'm OCD <clears throat> and nothing would alarm me more than to come to the crap craft space and find okay so it kind of works well for me now if you wanted to and I'm just looking at that I'm probably going to bring in uh, into that space probably a little bit of um, the Demove um, just so it ties it back in with what we've got on the uh, the DSP. <clears throat> Here we go. <clears throat> All right. I mean, you can go too far, and I have been known to do that too. Okay, that. Is perfect for what I want okay <clears throat> so we've now got this happening all right let's get to work on our flowers okay now I will admit I have prepared these in advance and I've glued them also because you will notice with the flowering tulip set um, these are them here we're creating um, three-dimensional flowers and these dies um, there's each flower has up to three dies um, and this die will have this one and one of these and this die will have this one and also one of these this die just has one of these don't be confused by it and there is um, plenty of instruction material around that shows you which die goes with which so I'm not going to bore you with that um, just to say the first time you try it it's a nightmare um, how do I know that well let's just say I do so these are the flowers that I've made up with the uh, the die set now I'm just going to show you how I went about coloring those and I did have some oh here it is here right here under my nose in another pile I just want to show you how I colored those and I'll put one together for you so I'm going to have a bunch of multicolored flowers and we'll do the I think we'll do the red one uh, okay here we go so using the merry merlot i think it is oh sorry the berry burst the berry burst um just make sure yes it is okay so here's what i did i folded the um 
the cutout piece and made sure that I could colour uh, each of these pieces. Now, look, some of you prefer to a more even coloration process, e.g. pencils, watercolour pencils, markers, stamp and writes, whatever. It's whatever works in your world is what I'm going to advocate. I used to sit there and religiously colour everything and but I didn't really have a good sense of understanding light and tone when I first started this. I see I'm one of these people who can't even draw a straight line crooked or draw a straight <laughs> a straight line crooked. I meant to say a straight line with a ruler. Um, and but as you and I look in, as part of my research, I spent days on the internet looking at my stamping up colleagues to see how they did things and I was in awe and I learned so much and one of the things that I did learn was most people like to have everything nice and neat and tidy well I discovered very quickly that that's not what I am about I like things uh, to be colored in a very natural way and that's just my style now as you can see, okay, that will go there, and that one will go at the back. So, okay, let's colour. I'm going to leave that one there for a moment. Let's get the. Uh, let's just get another dauber, and I'll do the uh, Highland Heather. You know, with these tulips, here we go. With the Highland Heather, I'll just grab that out. With the Highland Heather, um, just showing you how I colour this. I figure that the way Mother Nature has coloured her, her um, natural assets out there in the wild, it's all very... Um, natural I'm going to say now so I tend to steer away from coloring too much with pencils and markers and blends I'm very much into coloring with a dauber or a blending brush okay let me show you so that's these three pieces go together to make up one of these flowers If I was, and look, as I said, this is a retired, now I've got too much. This is a retired set. Always have a cotton bud on hand. In fact, always have a, a few dozen on hand because it is so easy to overdo it. Now, I'm bending that around just a little bit. Uh, and I'm taking off some of the excess glue all right let's just put that there for a minute then what you've got to do is it's a bit like a houdini act there we go and you're going to have that sort of effect once we get it all glued in so let's just glue this side not liberally sparingly because otherwise you're going to have glue everywhere and there we go I'm just going to wipe some of that off because I know where that excess is going to go. Okay. Now, oh, and the other thing to have on hand is um, some clips of sorts. I'm using the small paper clips. And as I pause for a moment and try and find where I've put the container. Mm. All right, I see. Out of harm's way, but also out of my sight. Here it is. Okay, let's put those away. Now, so we've got that side down and let's get this side glued into place. Here we go. And here's where the clip will come in 
invaluable. Let's just slide that in there. There we go. And that's what that little treasure looks like there. Okay. All right. Now, and the red one, let's just quickly close that one off with some glue as well. And there we go there. And as uh, Murphy's Law always predicts, I'm missing a piece that goes there. So I won't do that flower. But look, we've got five buds, multicolored, and I'm very happy with that. I've also got their stems. Now, what I did with these... Um, as you can see, they will slide in there like that, and the leaves will, and what I'll do is, in true Michael's card art form, I'm going to be not gluing them flat, but I'll be bending them and shaping them in such a way so that there's colour and movement on the card. So I only glue in that amount, that space there, and leave this to flap around. But that's just my style, and you may prefer to glue everything flat. But what I did, I stamped uh, Evening Evergreen on Soft Sea Foam. Uh, if you want to know what those colour combinations were there. Now I'm just going to get rid of that for the me meantime. And we're probably at the stage now where we can start to put all of this together. So let me show you how that flies once I make a bit of clear space here. All right. Now, <clears throat> one thing I have learned, unfortunately or fortunately, over time is take the spare excess ink and glue off your fingers because that will come back to buy true very nicely. Thank you. All right, so let's start to pull this together. We've got this, we've got the card. I'm going to, oh, I'm going to place it on a piece of card base um, of this color here. Now, this is, um, let me just find the color for you. I did have this in, in my haste to clean up for you. I've moved it, but Bubble Bath is the color of the base card that I'm going to use for this activity. Um, I'm going to, at some stage, also do um, a card in linen, and I'll um, I'll stamp that using this colour. Now, you'll see here, I've got a blunt um, a blunt colour, but you know, I don't mind that, and you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to enhance that a little bit that bluntness. Now, for all you purists out there, shut your eyes because you may not like what you're about to see. I don't mind giving my card DSP or my cards a bit of a distressed look. Um, it, oh no, I, wait there, I won't do all the ends yet because I've got to just, I've got to cut this down to size. But what I've also got to do is I want to I want to uh, do something with this card base, but I'm just not sure what I'm going to do yet. I'm, I'm toying with the idea of embossing it, and if I do that, do I take my flowers just to there? I think I do, and then I need to cut some of this off. So just bear with me a moment, and I'll come. Okay, I'm back, and I've decided what I'm going to actually do. Um, I trimmed that down to um, my to match my card base. Now I will, sorry, I will go back and just remind everyone of 
the measurements that I use for my cardstock. I'm always my well 99.9% .9 of the time if I've got a um, a single fold it's always 13 centimeters by 21 centimeters and this is always the base card if I use one and 99.9% .9 of the time I do or and I might use multiples but if I use one it's always 12 and a half, uh, 12 and a half by 10 centimeters so 13 uh, 13 by 21 12 and a half by 10 okay and that means that this is going to be 12 and a half high and I'm going to leave a little bit of a border on each side and I'm going to sit this uh, whole thing so this is um, uh, let me just remind you the colors Knight of Navy and this is bubble bath bubble bath and I've embossed it with the time-worn script embossing folder so it's going to sit like this this will go on the top and you'll see here because I had got I did have a blunt edge I got my scissors out and I'm going to rough up the edge now why do I do that uh, height and texture I it look it doesn't need it but I'm going to say it's going to add an element of interest and some will cry and some will go oh that's interesting and some will go oh that's lovely ideally I get more of the, the latter two anyway uh, and if I do do the roughing up then I always come along and I'll um, uh, burnish it and that just highlights the whole effect. And you know what? As I'm burnishing this, you can start to see the cardstock is folding. And I don't mind that because it adds to the, well, it adds to the effect, in my opinion. Now, I'm just gonna grab out the other. Now remember I had two colors here. And I'm going to burnish in both those colors. And that just adds to the effect as well. And once again, those purists will be absolutely turning off their screens by now. However, here we go. There we go. All right. Now the important thing is just to make sure that everything is aligned. Yes, it is. And that'll fit nicely there. Now, what I've got to do is put this on here and I want to make sure it's a size that is complementary. No, I have to take it right through to the to the top layer of cardstock because if I just did it there it's gonna look a bit silly. Okay, so that there is going to be the size which as we know is 10 and I'm just going to pencil cut that and take it over to my trimmer. So just bear with me a minute. All right, so that has been trimmed down to the size we want. Now, what am I going to do here? I'm going to, Let's say we get this mounted now so I can get that onto this. I'm just going to glue this. And into the corners and there we go. Okay. I'll place that down there. There we go. Oh, I've had for my I don't remember there that was upside down, but no, alas, it's not. All right, now I'm going to to attach that, and I'm going to attach it just with glue. I was thinking about. I 
was thinking about um, giving it a bit of a fold. You know, I'm going to still do that. So what that means is I'm not going to glue every corner. I'm going to just leave a bit of a distressed look about it. Okay. And well, the other option you've got is do you center it? Do you keep it centered? And these are the things that rush through my head at the last minute as I'm pulling together the final thing. It's like a traffic, it's like an intersection up here um, in my head. And I don't know if anyone's listening to me from New York, but I thoroughly love that city. And when I was over there for the very first time, Seven years ago, I can't believe it. I love the traffic, <laughs> and that's what my head is like sometimes when it comes to card craft. There's a lot of yellow taxis up there in my head. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put this on dimensionals, and I'm going to glue that there with a few folded edges. So let's get on to that. And you can see there I haven't glued all the way around to those edges. Okay, and I'm going to do it just off center, like that. There you go. <coughs> Excuse me. Right. Do I want some birds in there? Why not? Let me just get some birds. And I'm going to go to my faithful on the horizon stamp set, and I'm going to. No, you know. I'm going to go to Heron Habitat because there's two lovely birds, herons, in there. And let me tell you, stamping herons, stamping two herons is a lot less risky than stamping five ravens, let me tell you. Especially when you get a halo. And it doesn't matter how gently I touch, that's better. Doesn't matter how gently I touch, oh, that's even better. Um, I always end up with a halo. But look, here we go. Wish me luck. Voila. Now, can I just give you advice? Never do that. Always stamp before you glue because. How do I know that? It is because I have stamped, I have glued, then stamped, and then had to pull the whole thing apart. Right, so we've got here, and so a little bit more color and movement going on as well. And I think by now, just from this one, you're starting to realize that I am not a typical card crafter. I always have in the back of my mind a, a scene going on. There's a, and one of our colleagues, compatriots, said to me, she said, Michael, your cards always tell a story, a story of quieter times. And I thought, wow, that's a really nice compliment. I never really thought about it, and that's what I was trying to achieve. But, yeah, I suppose... What I am trying to achieve is something that is pleasing to the eye. Now, a little bit of dimensional overhanging there is not pleasing to my eye. Okay, Renegade Dimensional dispensed with. And I'll just remove these. And... Right, here we go. So why am I, here we go. Why am I putting this on dimensionals? Well, I want. Here we go. Okay, there we go. I like the way it sits forward like that. And you can see a little field of um, tulips in the background. Now. Let's get these little babies up here. 
And what we're going to do, these should be glued by now, or they should be dried and well sealed. Okay, now I think I'm going to go with just the three. And what color looks more pleasing with our color combinations? Let's have a look at this. Mm, and this one is not quite dry. So let's use this one. Okay. All right. What do you think? Okay. Well, let's get some stalks out here. Uh, some stems. There we go. Okay. What does that look like? Got a few folded leaves. You know what? We may not even need. We may barely get away with two. Let's have a look. I'm a firm believer in not overcrowding. And what I've done is I think I've got the herons in a position where they're probably not going to feature very, very prominently, if at all. But look, let's just see. Oh, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. All right. I know what we're going to do. Um, do I need three? And you can start to appreciate now why I've got the fence, the fence of tulips, if you like, in the front. I've got one, two, three. Now, three tulips. Thank goodness for the putty. Three tulips. Two, two of a pink, one of a purple. On an angle, like so. Extend them out, cross them over. And we won't do too many leaves. In fact, what I might do is I might just use the smaller ones. And there we go. Oops. I'll put the long one there. There we go. So it will look a little like that, I think. Okay, let's get this glued down. Um, and sometimes I just need to bite the bullet and get the get the things onto the onto the page. Now, do not. Uh, glue it down until you get your tulip embedded in. Okay, that's good, that's good. Okay, a bit of glue on the bottom of this. There we go. That goes in there, like thus. And doing it that way means you save the, the plight of the herons. Okay. Now, this one here, we'll see how we're crossing it over at the, yep, that helps to increase the overall appearance of the, 
stems. So let's just get this in. There we go. Like so. And just as I say, don't do it. It doesn't. Mm, I think I want this one. There we go. Fabulous. So that will then be glued. Here we go. Like so. And this one. Voila. Mm, now. Okay, so that can be glued in two places. And here. Mm, we've got a bit of glue seeping its way out from under that. cross over there so let's just wipe some of that off here we go okay a couple of seconds we'll do the trick there now where do I put this leaf here Oh, actually, that looks quite good. So let's go with that. And look, you know, it's surprising. So these things just evolve. Once you get started, you just think, oh, good idea. And there we go. And there's an, uh, an example of that. Actually. And I'm going to do this like that. Yes. Turned and there. <clears throat> there we go. So, and right, I want that to sit there, and to do that, I'm going to need to paper clip it. All right, just a bit of glue there. And there. Okay, just give that a moment or two. And that's sitting forward. I'm going to sneak in another flower bud here. I think, or here, yes. Now it doesn't have, it doesn't have a stem, but I don't think that matters. Let me see, or does one put it here? No, I'm going to put it here. I think. Yes, I'm going to put it there. Now, it may look like over overkill at the end, but I will try and eliminate that by pushing this one down a bit. There we go. Yes, beautiful. Okay. There you go. Voila. 
And the sentiment is going to sit here in this spot. Um, so it distracts. Uh, now, let me show you what I do with my sentiments. I'm going to use this one here, sending caring thoughts. <clears throat> And, okay, so let's get, oh, the Highland Heather, and let's, now, this is kind of like my trademark, oh, I don't know if it really is or not, but, I'm just going to say all of my cards always have a sentiment that is fussy cut and burnished, like so. If I can find the dauber that I used. Don't worry, we'll grab another one. And here we go. And now, some people say they don't put any sentiments on until they know what they're going to send the card to, to the card to, and for what purpose. But you know what? I like to have a sentiment on there so I know exactly where and it looks and what sins it's going to hide. And. It's easy if you put it on with dimensionals and then if you need to, because you want to change the recipient or you want to change the purpose, it's easy to take the sentiment off. All right, let's take out the bobby pin, the hair clip, the leaf clip, and there you have, um, basically, you have a bunch of tulips. Now, it may look a little unkempt but nonetheless a nice bunch of tulips from a field of tulips if you like i will go and put some sentiments on there but i'm not going to show you how to do that because you know how to put sentiments on and um there you go well i hope you enjoyed that i hope you've learned something and i hope to see you again next time at michael's card art thank you very much